Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to be talking about keys to an effective board ERM oversight program. And joining me to talk about this important task is Michael Monolongo, who's the board member with Herbalife and is also the Chief Administrative Officer and Senior Vice President for Sodexo. Welcome, Michael. Great to be here. Thank you very much, TK. So this is a pretty important topic because when we think about it, after the board gets the right CEO and retains the right CEO, um, and after you make sure that the company's going in the right direction, it seems like the next core responsibility that the board has is a risk oversight responsibility, and that's to make sure that um, the risks that exist in a business are mitigated, that you come up with a risk tolerance level of, because there's a risk reward. Um, uh, all companies take risks, you just, it has to be a calculated risk. And you don't want, shareholders want to make sure that the board is overseeing that the company isn't making a bet the company kind of risk. So that creates sort of the responsibility. And then when you look at how difficult it is to get your arms around that, a lot of experts are concerned that it is so complex, particularly when we add uh, cyber risk to that, that it's so complex sure. that it's almost impossible for the boards to get their arms around that. So you participate in that responsibility. You're on a public board, or you're also on several private boards. How do you approach a task that is so overwhelming like that? Well, TK, let me add my voice to yours by saying that the holy grail, or perhaps more accurately, the holy trinity of board duties beyond care, loyalty, and good judgment is certainly, as you point out, strategy, talent management, and risk management. And let's be clear. When it comes to risk management, the board's responsibility, frankly, is to protect and enhance value, uh, enterprise value, or put another way, to preserve and create enterprise value. And every company faces, takes, and responds to risk. The question, I think, is how does your company do it, and are they actually capable of doing so? And at the end of the day, I think what you'll find more often than not is, is that those companies, those firms that are successful in today's marketplace are those that best understand their enterprise-wide risks, their risk profiles, appetites, and tolerances, and are able then to align that risk-taking with what they do best. At the end of the day, I think that's what an ERM, or Enterprise Risk Management Process or Program, does, and why I'm a big fan of a well-structured program. Um, as you point out, is today's risk and compliance landscape complex? Absolutely it is, and probably even more so, arguably. But it's another reason why I would suggest that a process or a program like ERM is valuable, because I think what it does is help to simplify what's complex. And in addition to that, I also believe that it helps to reassure investors and other board members that what is going on in terms of risk management is being systematically or you're, in terms of business risks and opportunities, they're being systematically identified, they're rigorously analyzed, they're uh, intensively managed and, if you will, strictly monitored on an enterprise-wide basis. And what I would suggest to my fellow board members and directors is to look at the ERM framework that the folks at COSO had introduced, I think it was back in 2004. 
And what you'll find is that this is really looking at risk in a very comprehensive manner, a very systematic and structured way. And so that ultimately what you find is that it broadens the focus on uh, risk management beyond the traditional sort of physical assets, financial uh, 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 arrangements, if you will, and looks at all the sources of enterprise-wide value. And it also looks at improving a company's risk management capabilities. Uh, the other thing that it does, I think, and something that I've really come to value quite a bit is that over time it helps to uh, have the board become better at assessing, addressing, understanding, monitoring, and managing risks and opportunities and the capabilities that a company has to manage those risks and opportunities. And frankly, I think that the ERM framework is just an excellent way uh, for board members to really get a 360 view of a company's risk exposure. And look, I think that, um, frankly, at the end of the day, too, uh, there is no way that a board can feel comfortable with a company's strategy without having a serious debate, discussion, conversation, dialogue around risk. Um, otherwise, it just becomes an issue of hope. And as a uh, former boss of mine who wrote a book called Hope is Not a Method, um, certainly, uh, if you don't have a good risk understanding, you're not going to be able to have a robust strategy. So how about the issue of like where it falls on a board level? Like most of the time it gets put into the audit committee, okay, for risk. Well, certainly the audit committee is responsible for the financial related risk and those issues, but risks are much broader than that. And now you worry that is, is it too big of an agenda, okay? So you see um, risk committees being formed by, by more than just a few, not only those that have been mandated, which are financial services, but other people are seeing the value of that. So somebody has responsibility for it. Do you have any views on that? Or is every company so different that they've got to make a choice where it's best managed? TK, that's a debate worth having. And ma in many ways, I liken that debate to the one that uh, keeps occurring in terms of whether or not you should have a separate chairman or a separate CEO or the two uh, titles or responsibilities under one person. And I think in this instance, at least the way I come down, is that it's something that needs to be left to each individual board. But each board should uh, consider whether or not it needs to actually split out that responsibility. Um, you're, you're right in what you just suggested that audit committees have traditionally in the past been focused on financial reporting issues. Uh, but because they have the, if you will, the functional expertise to look at risk and to examine it, and certainly starting from the financial side, and they also have a relationship that they've built with both the internal and external auditors who look at a company's risks as well. Uh, they're probably, at least initially, best positioned to understand uh, risk in a larger sense and to take on, at least initially, that responsibility. But uh, depending on the company's industry, its competitive landscape, and so forth, it's probably very prudent to take a look and determine whether or not someone needs to take a look at that a bit more closely than just, say, the financial reporting silo. What I, what I fear is this, is that, because um, I'm not a big fan of standing up risk, or I should say standing up committees for the sake of standing up committees, if you will, because it then begins to siloize, and I'll make up a word there, uh, the responsibilities that a board overall needs to be paying attention to. And this is an area, by the way, ERM, that has to be a board topic, not exclusively the, the domain of a particular committee. All the members of that board need to have their fingers on the pulse of risk in that company. But as I said, depending on the company's 
industry, the company's competitive nature or profile, it may very well be the very prudent thing to break out that responsibility onto another committee. So, Michael, um, we have about a minute left, and I wanted to make sure that we touch on these keys. So your first recommendation is really to look at the COSO. You know, they've done a lot of work relative to ERM, and that's a good thing. Can you give me another key that somebody can take away from this that might be valuable for them as far as doing this? So. Um, COSO, we know, you talked about everybody independently having to evaluate, you know, that risk level really as it relates to their plan. And anything else that we can add to that? Absolutely. There are a number of things, and you mentioned a few of them, but what I would certainly do as a start is have directors engage with management in a very serious conversation and debate and review on the state of ERM in that particular company and ask questions like, if there indeed is a process, an ERM process in place, how rigorous is it? How disciplined is it? Who is leading that process? Is it a board agenda item? And if it is a board agenda item, how often is it on the agenda? And how much time is allocated to that particular topic? I would also ask, is there a common risk language that fosters communication among all the various stakeholders? Then also, assuming that management has the capability of assessing its own risks and managing those risks, I would also ask, is there a continuous enterprise risk assessment process in place that analyzes, prioritizes uh, all the risks and opportunities in that company, and are those risks aligned with strategic goals and objectives? I would also add to that, is there a uh, gap analysis that's being performed of current and desired risk management capabilities and does the company have a risk management vision along with goals and objectives and then uh, another set of questions that I would certainly ask is is there an ongoing and structured process to update a company's risk profile appetite and tolerances as new changes enter the marketplace and how effectively are those changes in the risk profile appetite and tolerances how effectively are those changes communicated to internal and external stakeholders? So absolutely have those set of questions that directors would ask company as uh, the company management as well as referring to COSO, uh, the ERM framework, as a benchmark. Yeah. Well, Michael, that is just great advice. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. It's a pleasure. And uh, that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take a look at another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar. Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.